Shall I do it again? Are we live? I think we are. Are we live? <laughs> right, Asalaamu Alaikum everyone. We are live. Welcome back to the second episode of Let's Talk with Aima. Live here on Al Hikam Media's YouTube channel. Uh, first and foremost, please go and subscribe to our Let's Talk with Aima podcast channel. So it's just Let's Talk with Aima. Type that in. Um, the media team will put the link uh, in the comment section, in the live chat. Please subscribe to that channel. Uh, we've had one video uh, removed due to violating community guidelines. We might have another one today. So just go over there and check it out. Inshallah, tonight we're going to be talking about Islamophobia. We're going to be talking about freedom of speech. We're going to be talking about all the other subjects and topics. Obviously, I'm joined by uh, Didi and Soldier Was. Like to Didi Pogba has uh, turned up in his Manchester United t-shirt today. Repping Pogba today, not Ozzy. Today he's uh, repping Pogba and we've got Was who's uh, quite Rapping. blue and... Repping hybrid partout, huh? Yeah, he's come all the way from Peshawar <laughs> with his hat. You're putting so the pop as well. Oh, well, that's hybrid partout, huh? Then, it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so... Um, it's nice, nice of you guys to join us again, uh, and let's start. Miss Freedom of speech. There's uh, huge discussions every so often about this this topic mm. um, about what is freedom of speech. Do we have the right to say what we want to say? How we say? How has it come about? Uh, recently, we've seen in the media uh, the issue with regards to the drawing of caricatures. Uh, those uh, depicting uh, Billah, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam. Do people have the right to do this? Mm. Uh, this is all what we're going to discuss, and I think it's important to understand that. To begin with, that the Freedom of Speech uh, Human Rights Act, which was documented in 1998, yeah, um, it mentions in there that we all as all of us have the right to say what we want to say, to express what we want to express. I mean, if I was to, to actually read out what is said in regards to the, the law on free speech, under Article 10 of the Human Rights Act in 1998, mm. everyone has the right to freedom of expression. Uh, but the law states that this freedom may be subject to formalities, conditions, restrictions or penalties as are prescribed by law and are necessary in a democratic society. So, if we was to break that down, in a simple nutshell, we can say what we want, we can express anything, as long as it doesn't go against the law. Or we can say what we like, but we might be penalised for it. And we might be penalised for it. Mm. So my argument is going to be, we're saying that you have the freedom of expression and speech. You can say what you want, mm. but is it really freedom? No, it's blurred lines. That's what it is. It's not knowing. It's them telling us we've got, it's naming it freedom of speech, but it's not freedom of speech because they've limited it to what they want. We've seen it recently as well with a lot of celebrities. The Nigeria thing happened, the Ensars, and um, a lot of this mainstream celebrities were putting it up on their Instagrams and they got removed straight away. The comment, the comments were getting removed. Uh, the post would get removed because it was about Ensars. So, got microphone issues here. I'm going. Yeah, just move it back a little. There. And up. And up. More. Can but don't bring it close to your mouth. Can you hear me? Can everyone hear him pl clearly, yeah? Well, they're not going to answer this, are they? No, they'll be able to hear him. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but they will comment in the live chat. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if it's like this, just, See, just it, here. His freedom of speech is getting blocked. <laughs> it did in the okay. first episode. That's why everyone's going to speak more now. There you go. But yeah, we were saying, I was saying that you can see with the celebrities, a lot of their posts are getting removed, a lot of their comments are now getting removed. Mm. So where is the freedom of speech? Even them, that there's obviously terms and conditions within the freedom of speech. I think we've got freedom of speech to the extent where it starts becoming an issue for the wider community. But the problem is it's biased. What is an issue for us in our community as Muslims, as Pakistani, whatever culture you're part of, you realize that freedom of speech only becomes an issue when it's somebody who's not from that community that does that speech. So, for example, I'm a Pakistani-British Muslim. So, a Pakistani-British Muslim says something, 
Number one, it's not going to be as bad as if he wasn't from that community. Number two, even if it was said no, from no, them. I, I, I know what you're saying. I know you're looking at it from your perspective or mm. from a perspective of being a British Pakistani from Bradford. Mm. We say something, it gets highlighted more than say somebody in London or yeah. in Sussex or in Surrey or somewhere where it's a posh white area, for yeah. example. That, not necessarily. You know, I personally believe we, we, we're quite, we're always quick to say, oh, just because he's a Paki and he said it. Mm. That's why, you know, he's, he's been picked up on that point. No, but that Not necessarily. To, no, no, not but necessarily. If, if I, what I mean is, if I say something against Pakistanis, everybody's going to understand, even if it's against them, they're going to look at it from the approach that this guy might have a point if they're Pakistani. But if I say something about a white person, they're going to look at it as in it's targeted and it's negative. The same way, is if a white person says something against a Pakistani, I'm going to be more offended and my barriers are going to be higher because he's not from my community. Well, let's, let's, let's just say, go to America because mm. America, a lot happens. Mm. The Black Lives Movement, what's been happening recently with George Floyd, what happened mm. before then in Ferguson and in other parts of, of America where the rights of black people are violated, plus police brutality and, and, and stuff like that that's mm. happening there. When we, when we look at that, and we see the rights of black people mm. and how they infringed. Do they have the, the right to say what they want to say? Because now media is showing brutality against black people. Mm. There seems to be a level of people being cautious now what they say about the black community, the Hispanic community. Do, do you get my point? I it's, understand, yeah. It's because the, but prior to that, it was people could get away with loads of stuff. They could they could use the N word. Now the N word is frowned upon. But it's, it's it like a black guy can use the N word. Mm. But if we use the N word, then all of a sudden, it's frowned upon. But a black guy can use that. Yeah, now it's, it's, it's using with the N word generally. Now you know mm. if if a, if a, if somebody was sat on CNN news, mm. a a an anchor. Mm. A news news report anchor, and a black one, or just uh, anyone, okay, and use the n word. Mm. Would he not get sacked? Of course he would. Would he not be suspended? Of course he would. He would have to apologize. Yep. Isn't this what happened to Jeremy Corbyn with his anti-Semitic but remarks? Because it's anti-Semitic. That's why. No, but that's because it's recognized. Yeah, some are more highlighted yeah, more than others. So of course, some are highlighted more than others. I think there was uh, recently somebody was done over. I can't remember who exactly for using the word coloured, right? Yes, the yeah. FA. Uh, yeah, I forgot yeah. his name. Greg Chairman. Clark. I no, think his name it was Greg hyped, Clark. But it wasn't hyped to the point where people lost their positions. No, he did. He, he resigned did. from his position. He actually he resigned from his position. But he, he's the head of mm. the football association in England. He makes all the major decisions. I think mm. what Wasi's trying to say, there wasn't a lot of roll around it. There, yeah, there wasn't a hype to it. But as soon as it comes down to anti-Semitism, and now don't get me wrong, I'm not targeting that, but I want people to understand, I want the viewers to understand, the people who are listening to this to understand that with each different kind of community that gets offended, everyone's got the, we've got Islamophobia, it's a label that is given to Muslims who get offended, all the ones that offend. Anti-Semitism for the Jews, you know, uh, white on white, black on black, all these kind of terms that come with it. Xenophobia and yeah. other phobias that when are out there. When it comes to anti-Semitism, now what you just mentioned there about it being in politics and it being a news anchor, there's a massive difference on freedom of speech within professional environments and word on the street, urban you know, uh, urban languages. Urban and, lingo. And, yeah, and people just talking on the street because what happens on the street is more for the common man. Yes, a news anchor might not use the N-word, but if you go to America, it's used so much within those communities. It's still used, but there's a massive difference. My point being is that anti-Semitism, the word anti-Semitism is highlighted a lot more within the big, the media. Is, you um, know, I'll chime in there just for a second. I think it's because they organized, they've gone to the top. They've said these are our laws. We, we know what you know is you'll have jumped the convo and gone, gone jump straight into anti Semitism. We're going to come to that. Mm. Y y you're right. You're absolutely right. Anti Semitism and how it is, I, I agree with that. But what we're saying is that let's, for, the, for those who are listening, mm. those who are watching, who don't understand, you know, this point is very important. Under the Human Rights Act, mm. Article number 10, 1998, what it says about freedom of expression. Mm. It comes with this added condition 
that you have to beware as long as it's not against the law, not against any of this. You can say what you want. The moment you infringe the law, my argument here would be that we're saying it's freedom, yet it's a restricted freedom. Where's the line though? That's what I want to know. See, the line they're saying is it's the law. If the moment you start to offend a Jew, mm. you've now your freedom has been taken away. You can say anything, but you, so if so, where's the so same for is, the Muslims? Which, there you go. Which is my point. Mm. We have the freedom to express. Anyone in this world has the freedom to express, mm. but it's censored. There is limitations. There's restrictions. So it's okay for you to express what you want. Mm. But the moment you mention, for example, the Holocaust, or you mention events like this, which have taken place in the past, which we condemn. Which are deep against, to people, yeah, of course. And, yeah, absolutely but... outright wrong. Mm. This injustice and oppression and persecution that took place yep. you know, in the concentration camps. We mm. speak out against that. We're of against course. any form of injustice like that. But it's, that was, that, if you were to mention that in a different light, mm. All of a sudden, this is now, you have your, your right to f free expression mm. is taken away. Why? Because you're now offending. You've now entered into offense. So when you, when you start offending now, the, the important thing that we need to bear in mind here is that where's the line when it comes to offending people? Comedians, yeah, that's all they do. See, somebody's just mentioned a very valid point. Um, that see, the act that we're talking about is British law. We cannot act against or speak against anything that goes against British law. But when we start hitting those wi worldwide platforms and we're talking about comedians and we're talking about politicians and we're talking about YouTube stars and we're talking about all these people, we we can't contain it to UK law. Because we don't know what the law is in America in regards to kind of this kind of stuff. Like you've just mentioned, Ima, that you know, we can't uh, talk about, for example, anti-Semitism or the Holocaust. You know, there's no freedom there according to British law. No, you can talk about it, but you can't talk about Offend. it in, in a way, offensive way. Mm. You know, and the moment you do that, what are you doing? Causing You're now hatred. entering your, your basically your, your right to... Sp so you don't really have a right. Effectively, you can say a certain amount. Mm. You, there's restrictions. There's yeah, limitations who told us to we've that. We've got a right. You gotta to go to that as well. They're telling us we've got a right. So what they no, that, they're that, controlling that's what they're that's telling us. Narrative that we've been fed. No, no, that's we've what I'm saying. That's if EU, they're telling you you got freedom of right, the person that's telling you he's got control over what freedom you've got. Then does that make sense? See, well, well, if when, I'm gonna tell you, you can, you know, you're gonna do such and such a thing for me. I know what you're gonna do for me. I know exactly what you're gonna do. I know. So who is that other? Is that the who's governing that? Who has put the laws in place? That was the but this is what I'm saying, Ima. The laws, this is the exact point that I'm making that when it comes to the UK, the law is different to what it might be to somewhere else in Europe. It might be different to somewhere else in the world. Well, I was reading in Switzerland that it's you're not the the freedom to uh, offend or say something against um, uh, the LGBTQ okay. community. Mm. You you can't say it basically. You could be criminalized. Penalized for having an opinion for against having a, a offensive opinion against that community. That's in Switzerland. In Switzerland, that's a law that's passed. But it's not in the UK. But it's not in the UK. So this is what I'm saying that if we say something in the UK and it reaches Switzerland, they might get offended about something, even though we're perfectly fine to do it. In the same way, I'm saying that somewhere else in the world, likewise in Pakistan, for example, you yeah, can exactly. say certain things in Pakistan which that you, you can't couldn't say, say here. here. Exactly. But, but so then when they translate to here, mm. people use this law. To, go, uh, to judge what they're hearing. Does but my question sense? is that, is there a world law? Is there a world kind of, not even a law, a policy? The Human Rights Act. The, like, the, the, the Human Rights Act is what they, they go by. The mm. EU, what, there are, the UN, these are, they have the Human Rights Acts in there. And they're setting the this. minimums for each human. And this is how it should be. This is what you can say. Mm. This is what you can't say. Mm. But, but what I'm saying but, is somebody but, decided that. That was governed but by But for people. who, for us, we're Muslims. Mm. Who, what are we governed by? God I'm going to go back to that. Mm. We are governed by the will of God, what Allah tells us to do. And so, so when, when it comes to freedom Quran, of speech in Islam, what are we supposed to do? So there you go. Now, Islam tells you that you shouldn't offend. Mm. You shouldn't. In the Quran, doesn't it say, you, if they swear at your, you swear at their God, they will swear at yours. Yeah. What if you have to offend to defend your own? You can never offend to defend though. No, but... 
Zaira, if I'm arguing, that's a good question. If, that. if I'm no, but arguing, my we'll religion with someone, answer that for the second. Yeah, somebody would say offending to defending is an extremist, is a terrorist. No, no. What I mean is, what, what I mean is, for me to defend my own policies and procedures as a Muslim, my rights as a Muslim. For if I'm explaining that to a non-Muslim and he's getting offended by it, it goes against stuff that he's learned that are part of his laws and his policies. Then, as a Muslim, to what extent can I go to? Follow that's my question. Well, we've got to be careful as well and interpret the Quran for today's day and age as well. I got to think because a lot of us when no, we no, go but to what we're saying, what your question is mm. that if if sometimes you need to offend to defend, mm. so the best form of defense is offense. Yeah, the best form of defending is attacking someone. Don't talk sports with Wasa. So, so if <laughs> if if I'm gonna attack someone, mm. that's me me effectively defending. Yeah, but. We're talking about speech here. Why would we need to go and attack someone in order to defend our point? Yeah, but my question is that is when you s- you say the word offend, you know, does it only cover an attack? Because somebody could say something to me, I won't feel attacked by it, but I might feel offended by it to the extent where it goes against the law. Do you know what I mean? For example, I mean, actually, I won't give you an example just to be on the safe side because I don't want to offend anyone. But my point being that I could make a very, very light-hearted comment mm. to somebody of a certain religion, of a certain community, of a certain caste, of a certain persona themselves, something that they're affiliated to. And for them, it's enough for them to get offended. See, attack, the word attack comes with its own kind of... Uh, connotation. Connotation, yeah. It, it feels very, very, I'm doing it purposely, I'm doing it maliciously. No, I, I mean having an open discussion, but you offend that person, you go, you say something, you could question their religion, you could question their policies, but you're still offending them, but you have to do that in order for you to prove your point. So I'm saying as a Muslim, can I do that? We shouldn't offend people. As Muslims, we mm. shouldn't be going around in order to prove a point mm. to offend. Unless it's like you have the social norms. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. There's there's the so, the social norms that we live in that we that we are known by. Mm. So maybe the social norm is, you know, in the social now the N word is becoming censored. Mm. Yet socially in the past, look at gangster rap. Mm. N word is used. You can't have a gangster rap without the N word being yeah. used. But then they'll say we're using it. We're allowed to own what we're using. Like me calling you a paki. Mm. I'm a paki. I can call you a paki. Because I'm a part But white I'm guy, that word, you know, red See, neck, he can't a, turn around and it, say that. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a relatable for each community because if he, if you look at me now and like the, the, he just used the word Paki, I don't, I'm not offended by that. But if the electrician walked in now as a white guy, and he says, you're, you're right, Paki. There you I, go. I would be offended by that. See, they, so this is the, that's the point. Mm. So in, in certain societies, mm. words are acceptable by those same societies. But then when you... I delve understand. into yeah, different yeah, 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 waters yeah. into a different mm. community it's not acceptable yeah but they'll say it's like being a culture vulture then isn't it you're just taking our culture for no reason that's ours we own no, it we're I, using I, I it I think it's a fair thing we're just using it for the world you know, to, and yeah. now moving from culture mm. we're in a global culture yeah, exactly. we're in a global village yeah the social media everything. Some, a point that I wanted to mention before was that when, especially when it comes to Islam mm. And, and freedom of speech and freedom of expression, etc. That, that you know stuff that's been happening in the past. Mm. When we when we come into this point, before nine eleven in two thousand and one, mm. before nine eleven, mm. it was quite different. In the eighties, before what happened in Iran in the seventies, in the sixties, mm. it was a lot more different to how the world is now. Of course, what they what what was said then. It's so much different to what is what can be said now. Yeah, because the rhetoric used then might have ten meanings today. And to, you see, it's just words, isn't mm. it? And it's how it's perceived. Some may be offended by what's said. Yeah. Others may not take offense. Others may not take offense. It's how you say things as well. It, and and the way I look at it is, and a good example is comedians. Just look at comedians. What they do, their job is to offend. Their job is to mock. The and job may, is yeah, to ridicule, and have a laugh about you know, it. and 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 that's all it is. You mm. know, they're gonna talk about the fat guy in the room. They're gonna talk about the skinny girl. I like how that's the first example that come to you. Sorry, was <laughs> I, I didn't mean to offend. <laughs> You're the only fat guy in this room, was. <laughs> but do you get my point? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, okay, it's, yeah. it's it, so they'll do that, and we're here, and we're having this joke and laugh. Mm. So we're having, we're having a. 
We can have that joke with you. You know that. Mm. I people use the dark the dark skin joke with me. Mm. That I'm 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 sort of dark or he's brown or he, mm. he's. They say that all the time. Lads who I play football with, all of them, we all have this laugh. Between us, okay, you can have a laugh. But then maybe the moment somebody goes to our parents, mm. they've crossed the line here. Now you're offending me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not gonna. That, that's I take that offensive. That, that, that ain't no joke, bro. Mm. You can't sit there and swear at my dad. You can't sit there and swear at my mum. Mm. But why? We're having a laugh. Do you get me? So, so it, it comes to that limit in it. There's that limit so for each human person. Humans, yeah. and this is why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, mm. you know, that you shouldn't. Whoever swears, sibabul Muslim mm. fusukun wa kitaluhu kufrun. Swearing a Muslim is evil. It's bad. Mm. The Prophet alayhi salatu salam said, don't use vulgar language. The Prophet alayhi salatu salam said, speak good to people. Mm. You know, speak. Uh, whoever believes in Allah Almighty, man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir fal yakul khayran awli asmut. Whoever believes in Allah on the final day, speak good or stay silent. Mm. This is telling you your rights as a human that you you shouldn't offend people with your speech. A Muslim is not offensive. It's not in the nature of a mu'min. In the makeup and DNA of a believer, he should not be somebody who offends. So if you want to play it safe, do it the Muslim way, innit? Because we don't, <laughs> and and yeah. I tell you straight, we do podcasts, right? Mm. I'm an imam. Mm. This is all I've ever studied in my life. All we ever do is read books, teach, preach. This is all we've mm. ever done, right? I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna always give this view. This is always gonna be mm. my view. I'm always gonna say, I'm always gonna go back to who who has rule or rulership over us. Allah is Nabi Ali Salatu Salam, the Quran and the Sunnah. See, on, and when on, you look at that, mm. and, and I think the world. I'm not saying we're going to sit here and we're going to get the world to accept the Quran and Sunnah because of our da'wah and our our in in the way we preach. No, mm. but what I'm saying is those who are listening that we have to go back to what is said here. I get that. You know, on on that point, in your position as an Imam, yeah. So me, I'm from the common people. I've not studied the Deen, nothing like that. But for us to and we've seen in recent years the kind of targeted attacks, whether they were verbal, whether they were physical, that we've been under ourselves and the kind of rhetoric that's, you know, followed with our religion. And obviously we know how everything's been, whether it's in England, whether it's been in Pakistan. How do we propagate our religion to be the true religion and for us to make it known to the people that we are peace-loving and, you know, this is our religion and we, we, we don't want people to offend us without offending them. Well, if it's a global village, you need to get into a global platform. No, no, but there are global so, platforms so, out there. Yeah, so we need to get the right people on them platforms. So w- when we're talking that we all have to accept, we now live in a global, you know, village. We yeah, are in a. Yeah. The world is now a small place. Multicultural. You know, multicultural. We we are in a small place mm. now. You know, we could be sat here. We know what's going on in Pakistan. We know what's going on in India. Mm. We know what's going on in Australia. We know what's going on anywhere in the world. We know, we know what's happening there. Mm. We we are effectively part of that. So because we are effectively part of that, we know what's going on. We know what is happening. Mm. You know, it's, we then need to, we're not, we're not restricted to just our village now. Mm. We can't go into the village mentality anymore. So we have to be, um, what's the word now? Mainstream, a bit more. Democratic. Diplomatic about it. And we've got to take mm. being. Can't be just Bati based. Politically correct, PC. That's what we all have to be. And, 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 and the way the world's becoming now. And, and diplomacy is something that we as Muslims need to adopt. Mm. Though in number, we are becoming a large amount of the world's population. If there's 7 billion in the world, mm. 1.6, 1.7, 1.8 billion is Muslim. That's nearly two in every seven is a Muslim in the world. Mm. Largely due to in the Middle East mm. and in the, uh, in the, uh, in the subcontinent. Mm. You know, these are an Africa. There's a lot of Muslim countries in Africa. There's a lot of Muslim countries in the Middle East, majority, if not all of them, and you've got the subcontinent as well. Mm. You know, there's a, a large percentage of Muslims that live in India, for example. Yeah. And now in Europe, Islam has entered. Islam has entered into America. You know, Islam is a, a worldwide, it's a global religion. It's not just a religion of Arabia. Mm. It's not something that's just come from there. And as Muslims are from different parts of the world, who stem from different cultural values or cultures. Mm. You know, I know Muslims who are Algerian, whose culture is different from Muslims who are Pakistani. Yeah, of course. Who are different from Muslims who are Turkish, 
who are different from Muslims who are from Africa, who are different from Muslims from who, who are born in Europe and in, in, in the UK. See, but they all still share that one common thing and that's Islam. So the any Quran and Sunnah. If, if somebody has an opinion on the Quran and Sunnah, you know, they're going to, they're not going to be as offended by that. It's like what I said to you, Didi, that if you call me a Paki, you know, I'm not going to be offended. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. if somebody, even whether they're from Sudan or whether they're from Iraq, yeah, yeah. yes, if it's a cultural thing, if they pick on the fact of my certain British cultures, the fact that I like to have a fish and chips on a Friday night, British culture, that kind of thing, yes, I can get offended there because we don't share that in common. Our ethnicities, our, uh, you know, the countries that we belong to, they're not in common, but we share Quran and Sunnah and Islam. We share that in common. And the, the one thing that we do all share in common is we're all humans. Let's strip it. Yeah, of course. That. So, so there's that right? there's that minimum thing that you there's are going to be able to. Agree yeah, on. you need to agree on that. Then you've got the, you know, what we're talking about here is the freedom of speech. Mm. Moving on, and you know, Muslim countries and the Middle East. And personally, what I think is we're not united. On no. a on a foundation level, look at us, yeah. yeah look at you, our. Are you look, saying look at our Muslims community. or are you saying as as humans? I'll tell you from our community, yeah. Was mm. how often do you give salam to the Muslim brother that's walking past you in the street? Me, well, to me personally, personally yeah, pretty, pretty often, yeah. Pretty, right. often. pretty often. Does that person ever give you salam back, or did they be surprised, or what was it? Yeah, be honest. No, I think the best way for me to answer that question is how much many times I get salam. Th- there you go. Yeah, that's very rare. <laughs> that's why? very rare. Why, why can't we give Islam to each other no more? I don't and if know, we're not I, I, united I, like that, and when people attack us and our Prophet they're going to get attacked. I think you know, when it comes down to unity, when it comes down to unity, look, I don't think that any, it's got anything to do with the fact that we possess different opinions. I think that's because of the country. Like if you go to, for example, I, I went to, Alhamdulillah, I went to Umrah a couple of years ago. You know, if you go to Saudi Arabia. You're going to see everyone. Yeah, you see everyone there and it's common there. Salam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Salam yeah. Haji. Here, you know, I'll be honest with you, when you're sat in traffic, you know what's common here? Yeah, 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 just that nod, yeah, yeah. That nod, the, the nod. that's common. Just no, but it's, it's, that's become our culture now. Mm. See, we've, our parents, when we were, I mean, I've, I remember our parents would say, Salam Dene. Yeah. You know, we were taught to a mm. certain point. But then as we went to school, as we went to universities, we started a social life, we mm. started going to work. We don't say, Salam Dene, bro. Unless mm. we walk into a gathering or something. Yeah. Islamically, we should begin with this greeting. Mm. Assalamu alaikum. You know, peace be upon you. Allah's mighty salam and blessings be upon you mm. at that time when you give that salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. But living here, I mean, this is just one example of how we are culturally. Mm. Yeah, in the Arab world, salam. Mm. Look how we text, salam. We don't even write assalamu alaikum, mm. me included. We all write salam. Mm. So, what we need to understand is that there's certain aspects culturally, mm. but we need to move out of the cultural village, mm. narrow sort of approach, and now understand we live in a global village. So we're not in a local village. We're in the global, we're in the, it's a universal sense of approaching things. So what we say now, how we say things, how we conduct ourselves as Muslims, you know, it will reflect on, Muslims everywhere. I yeah. get that, Emma, but you know where I, as a Muslim, would struggle with that is look, the point that you've made. If, say, for example, we were in a conference right now and we've got some access to every single Muslim's ears right now, we're propagating this message to them that, look, this is the world we're living in. We need to live together and let's have some sort of common ground. If I am willing to take that step and I take that step, but one thing you can't do or I can't do is we can't expect somebody who's not a Muslim to follow our advice because our God has told us to act like that in our life through the Quran. Now, the thing is, if I act like that and I don't get it back, we're human. You know, we're Muslims, but we're also human. And my, you know, that sabr, yes, we should have more. Yes, we should be able to deal with it. But if I, because my religion has told me to, is do not offend anyone, say, you know, always have peace with people and be, you know, everything cool, calm and collected. But I don't get that in return. Instead, I get racist slurs. Instead, I'll be walking down Leeds Road and some guy's driving past in Yedai, Ipaki or something like that. It's very, very hard to do. Have you ever had that? I've had it, yeah. I've had it. I actually, I had the opposite once. I was at a bus stop. There's a funny story for you, yeah. The guy did not realise... Do not I, waffle. 
No, no, you tell me no, 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 trust me is worth it, you got trust me is worth it, trust me is worth it, 45, 45, 45, 45, where's my freedom of speech, you got none here, you got, you got none, all right, look, I was at a bus stop, 20 seconds, I was at a bus stop, the guy thought I was white, so he stood behind me, he said, I'm going to kill you, 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 I'm going Papa, I'm also a big fan. I was a shock. So I've had both sides of it, yeah, which is yeah, not yeah. a lot of people can say. I've been, had racist slurs for not being white and for not no, being black. Are, 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 are we not, you know, and I, I know we're going into sort of racist slurs and that, but this is all, it comes under the freedom of speech and freedom mm. of expression discussion that we're having. Yeah. Do you not think we Pakistanis are some of the most racist people in the world? Yes, I do. I agree with that. You know, if we see a I black person, we say, I can't lie. Yeah. I absolutely agree. You know what it is? A Gorin. We... Do you not think... I've, and I've said this many, many times. Do you not think our parents or our elders have that racist mentality? Uh, you know what it is? Now you I'm not saying everything. Mm. No, no, not everything. No, I, I, I'm Look, pressing here, but... We've been learned to live with the community that we're part of in England, being the British white community. Not to, not to integrate. No, no, not to integrate. Or to integrate. No, no, we've been, we've been taught why, to why we've tolerate. Been taught, yeah, no, 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 no. How have we been taught to tolerate? I remember uh, as a kid, the elders telling me, look, just do your thing. Do you think that's it? Mm. Don't try to have big dreams. Don't have big ambitions. You're not going to get there. That's why, because the door's going to be closed in you. The, 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 there's two ways. There's two ways to this. Look, my elders always said to me, yeah, and other people that I know, you know, you can't hang around with, with Jack and Tom on the evening because we've got our way of living. Yeah, you can't, yeah. You know, they don't have halal food at their house. You know, for these kind of reasons. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm genuinely talking to you about genuine cases, right? So we... Uh, not myself because Alhamdulillah I've been exposed to the world quite a bit and I'm very very you know uh, I've got white friends and black friends you're international we understand get on with it <laughs> but my point being that look that stuff has been fed to children even within our own communities but at the same time that being said I believe we're racist to ourselves as well because within ourselves as Muslims as Pakistanis how many things do we have within them within those sects and yes freedom of speech doesn't just come down to races it doesn't just come down to religions within cultures you've got cultures if you're not a mirpuri you're, you're from islamabad well, you're Punjabi. a lori you're a sialkoti sialkoti bare khode hone if if not you're a pathan you know there's that within that one culture <laughs> is that embedded and then within the religion sunni wabi shia you can't go to his house because what, is, what does islam say then i mean that's a question i thought you'd ask me but i'll ask myself what does islam say here Go on, you know, yeah. should we have that mentality? No, of course Didn't not. Didn't the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Ali Salatu Wasallam, on the, the final, uh, yeah, in, on, the, Arab on Arab the farewell Arab. Hajj, mm. many deem this as the final major sermon, but the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasallam so. delivered a few sermons after this as well, mm. which maybe in some lecture or talk next time we'll do this. By the way, I just forgot to mention this. We started a bit late because Imam Adil was teaching. So... Um, mm. Uh, we've got cameras, you know, a lot of ca classes and courses are being taught online. Imam Adil, myself and others are teaching. So, hence why I thought I forgot to mention it before I'll mention mm. it now. But what did Nabi Ali Salatu <laughs> Salam say? It's called pitching it, you see. <laughs> the Prophet Ali Salatu <laughs> Salam say, mm. with regards to that, said, today I mentioned to you what? No black is superior to a white. Mm. No Arab is superior over a non-Arab. Mm. No black is superior over a white. No white is superior. Meaning... That you are all equal before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Muslims, yeah. you are all equal. But it is your righteousness and piety which will determine who is better than the other. So Inna akramakum yeah. indallahi atqaakum. Mm. Somebody can be deemed on the apparent to be righteous and pious. Mm. I can be perceived righteous and pious because of the length of my beard, the turban. Mm. You know, we, we've restricted piety to appearance. Of course. Yet piety isn't appearance. Mm. The Prophet Ali Salatu Salam said, Taqwa hahuna, taqwa hahuna, taqwa hahuna. They said, Piety, righteousness stems from your heart. Fa'innaha min taqwa al See, if somebody seen Alama Iqbal walking into a masjid today, they wouldn't think he's pious. Exactly. He only had a mustache yeah, like this and, and glasses on clean yeah. shaved. So don't, don't deem and judge piety based, based on, on appearances. Yeah. Don't judge piety based on Arab and non-Arab. Mm. Don't judge piety based on uh, a person's uh, skin color. Mm. Piety, the, the yardstick to measure piety isn't this. Piety, you can see and determine from where the conduct of a person in his character, his speech, mm. 
the, con- the, the way you can measure a person's piety is where? Through, through his actions. See, I think, you know, on that, the, there's a massive kind of thought process behind it is that because we know you can be superior in your religion as in closeness to Allah, piety, you know, uh, not, not so much the better Muslim, but, you know, you can have your ranks there. More practicing. More practicing. More religious. Or and what, what's happened over the past 1400 years is people have associated Arabs uh, or Arabia with, because even though they've not done it in the fact that they're Arab, or because of their nationality, or the fact that they look like that, or the fact that they were always wearing the jubah. They've not done it because of appearance, but because they're from the land where Islam originates from. They've kind of confused piety with the way that they look. And it's, it's a conf- stereotype. A stereotype, exactly, so, yes. So, which brings us that there are stereotypes mm. that are around every community, mm. every culture, every background. Communities within communities, cultures within cultures. So is it wrong if it's around every community, Aima? No, but Around stereotypes. This is just human nature. We immediately stereotype a guy with a big beard mm. and jubba walking in Tesco's with his wife, who's fully cladded with burqa on mm. and and fully wearing uh, the niqab. Mm. Hey, these guys must be super, you know, yeah, the extreme yeah, 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 yeah. stereotype. Then there's a lad who's walking with, you know, if look at you. I've spoken to people from down south who stereotypes of northerners. They yeah, stereotype yeah. the drug dealers up there. Mm. You know, all the it's not necessary. That's because we're humans. Bradford doesn't stereotype. And what does Islam say about how you should mm. how should you stereotype in Islam? You shouldn't. The first thing you should do is have a good opinion of your brother. Husnu Zan Billah. Husnu Zan Billah. Having good opinion mm. on a person. Benefit of the doubt. Mm. This is what Islam tells us. So when you look at freedom of speech within Islam, freedom mm. of expression within Islam, mm. stereotypes, racism, how to speak, how to do everything. Mm. When we put all of this around here, we realize that I believe Islam gives the better, the better opinion on this, gives the better understanding of. It's not. See, I see, I, I, and I dispute this word freedom. Here, how would you reword it? That's what I was trying to say at the start. Who gave us that rhetoric of freedom of speech? That's the point I made yeah, at the start. It's wording in it. But mm. words it's are a, powerful. A play, play of words, isn't it? Yeah, but, but I'm a powerful it, words are freedom. What does freedom mean? You're free to freedom do what you want. Is that very, I, your uh, wings are free. Free for all. You know, free for do, all. Do, do, yeah. Yeah. If somebody so walked in you, now, you can say what you want. Exactly. But really, you can't. But this is what I'm saying. So you can't use the word freedom than I'm saying. What's the better word? I don't know. What is a better word? See, what we're talking about now is stereotypes have been said. No, but stere- right, no, no, no. hang on, let me just make a Think point. Of one. We're talking of stereotypes that have been set in the world. Mm. Freedom of speech is a stereotype phrase that has been already put into our brain. Freedom of speech, freedom of speech. What is freedom of speech? Yeah, but That's what we're discussing now. We're delving into it, realizing that there is no real freedom of speech. No, of course there isn't. But my question is that how would you explain to somebody who's coming onto a mic and he's going to be speaking in front of uh, a crowd of 6,000 and you have to tell them that they've got a limited, because this is what it is, it's a limited freedom of speech that could possibly carry penalties. How do you explain that to a person except for doing it the way that I've just done it? Obviously. Yeah, but nowadays we know in it, if you mention Jews, you're going to get done. If you mention gays and uh, if you're homophobic, should I say, you're going to mm. you know Xenophobia. The, yeah, the, there's mm. certain things that we know we can't say anyway. We don't need to be told that now. Now I want to take the convo to this point. Mm. If you say something to the Jewish community, it mm. is deemed anti-Semitic. Mm. If you say something against the homosexual community mm. it is deemed as xenophobia correct me if i'm wrong homophobic i think yeah. homophobic, homophobia yeah. the xenophobia and there's other mm. phobias mm. what's phobia fear. fear yeah it's the it's the sense of fear mm. now when you say something against the is muslim community all of us you offend the muslim community is that deemed you know hate speech how many, how many examples? It's not been we, registered. This is the thing. We've not registered. I blame ourselves, mate. That's why I, that's why I was going to get to earlier on in the podcast. Yeah, you know, they, they organized. They've gone to the top. They've made their laws. They set, mate. We got more, no, no, more Muslims we, than Jews here. No, but you see why? I'll tell you why. How many? This is for the Jewish community and that. And, and how the Jewish community? What is their population in the UK? No, Where is the Muslim population in the UK? We, we are must be nearly 4 million. Okay. 
between four to five million population in the UK, it's us. Mm. We are nearly, we are nearly coming up to ten percent. The moment we get to about six million, we'll be touching nearly ten percent of the Muslim pop- wow. uh, uh, of the population of the That's UK. That's a lot less than I thought, to be honest. But it's a lot. Mm. Four no, million no, no is doubt. a lot. Yeah. Right now, within the Jewish community, if we were to get their statistics, the last time I checked, their population was about five, six hundred thousand. Yeah, it's, uh, so less than ours. Much less than ours. They concentrate community. Okay, how many members of the parliament do we have? Remember, politics, the world is run on politics. Mm, 650 something. More, uh, There's about 400 and something MPs in the House of Parliament. Yep. Right? Of which, mm. how many are Muslim? It's about 20, 30 of them. No chance. What are you on about? 10. Yeah, I've seen that list last time. There's, There's about not 20, 30. If you're including lords, maybe, yeah, okay. There's members of parliament, I think there's maybe 10 or 11, 12 mm. maybe. If I was to check, I could give you the exact figures. Go and check. Let's one. Google it. Right? How many members of parliament are from the Jewish community? Mm. Google that one as well. And if you was to compare the statistics, you will find that the Jewish community have a powerful voice in parliament. See, I was nearly right. Right. So there's 650 MPs. So my right, first okay. one was right. Right, okay, yeah, sorry. And there's 18 Muslim MPs. 18 Muslim MPs. Yeah, but there's a lot more Jewish ones. So how many are in the Jewish community? I'll tell you. Yeah, that but what of them 18 doing as well if you go to that? They've got the responsibility now. No, but w- w- let's not move into that sort of conversation. We, we'll, we'll hold them to account on another podcast. But what I'm saying is... There's, there's some that are obviously, they've not um, declared their faith. But according to... Uh, Google, it's roughly between 80 to 85. Jewish yeah. members of parliament? Yeah, in comparison to 18 Muslim ones. Look at that. And mm. compare the population. Mm. Go check what Muslim population is compared to the Jewish population. And you know what you'll find? What you will find is that we are not avidly interested in the way our country is run. Because mm. if we were. So we don't want it enough for ourselves. Then do you blame? If yeah, we, I see the if, point. If we don't have a powerful political voice mm. to mention, there's a hate crime against Muslims happening in the, on the streets of Bradford or in, in London. People are discriminating against Muslims. Who's, who's that, where's that voice gone? Mm. Who's going to speak out against this? So if we want to introduce a law into this country, when it comes to, you need to have a petition signed half a million for mm. it to be debated in, the House of Commons. Yeah. We can't even get that. If we say, if we was to say that, look. No, ju- ju- if you left it just to the Muslim community, you would not get it. Of course, I agree with that. Islamophobic. Mm. So there's Islamophobia. There's a rise in anti-Islam. Mm. There's a lot of anti-Islam rhetoric now mm. happening through France, Belgium, European countries. It's happened, you know, and in institutional organizations, was, yeah, in yeah. setups. Mm. And then you go in within UK as well. Yeah, of course. We can't we can't turn a blind eye to the far right mm. who want to rid Islam from the UK. Mm. You know we've got the Katie Hopkins and these yeah, 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 extremes yeah, that's yeah, happening yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You know See, and, th- that's my question, I'm that look, if we say something, now Katie Hopkins, correct me if I'm wrong, but she's Jewish. I don't know. Right, I don't I, know. So my knowledge tells me she's Jewish. Yeah, I might be wrong, but. My point being that if we threw out that kind of rhetoric or we had a celebrity on that level throwing out that kind of rhetoric to any faith, let's, let's not, you know, uh, contain it to... Uh, uh, restrict it to... Yeah, yeah, restrict it to Jewish people, anyone, Sikhism, Hinduism, whatever it is. My question is, forget what we're doing. Let's talk about the law that we've got in place. How are they getting away with it? Because whatever law there is for us, surely there is for them. No, there isn't. That's what I'm saying, man. No, but the law- they've gone into law, they put that anti-Semitic law in there. But when somebody draws a picture of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa a cartoon. you got to remember one thing though. That happened in France. So we can't talk about British law there. You do, that when, I was trying to go back to world law there. That oh, right, saying, okay. Human rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a human rights, the global village thing we're talking about again. So what I'm saying to you is, you need to be in power. That's what I was trying to say. You need to get into the position of power. Another thing that I was going to mention was, as Muslims, why we get attacked a lot and Islamophobia, we're not even united within ourselves. That's my point. We don't even like each other. We no, don't I hate within ourselves. That's what I said. That's there is, what I'm there is that racism. You need to have that, that unity uh, first between yourselves. 
to make a stand and to start making revolutions and you know but changing things. I genuinely, if you together. ask me my opinion, then we're a very long way away from that's it. That's what I'm thinking as well. That's what I'm saying. Because if we have to yet yeah, unite ourselves and thus leaving out the fact that you're a Bengali Muslim, you're a Pakistani Muslim, you're an Indian Muslim, we have to get over that hurdle. After we've crossed that hurdle, then it's the you're a Wahhabi Muslim. Yeah, just look locally. Forget all that. You'll hate on someone just because of the car he's got, just because of the clothes he's wearing. Even though he's Muslim, he's got so the my same question is, where do we go from here? Religion as you. Where do we go from here? So when we when we tell them this is what Islam says, we ourselves are going against that. Are not implementing what our Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us. Sallallahu then Sallallahu. what what? I think we should close the podcast here. Then in it, I think you guys have just just completely killed it. I would thought we. we Look at the expression on their faces. No, yeah, I thought the I thought I smashed a sick point there. To be fair, no, but what I'm saying is, what mm. I'm saying is that the, the the point here is to to create awareness. So we we can say we're not united, mm. and we've been saying that for a long time. Mm. Ever since uh, we was in madrasa and after, we've always we've always known Muslims are not united the way they should be. Mm. You know the way the Muslim Ummah united under Salahuddin al Ayyubi, mm. the way the Ummah united under you know many of the great Muslim yeah, yeah, leaders. Yeah, yeah. We're not united like that. There's a fact. You know we're we're quite divided amongst ourselves mm. culturally, in our societies, everything. But should that be the reason for us to not raise our voice? Did have we not seen an example mm. in Pakistan? Yeah. When you raise your voice, when you become the voice of the people. Mm. You know, we we need leadership in order for us to be recognized. In that day, bro, we're 1.8 million in the world. Only Christians have a larger population than us, and that's only 200 million more. Mm. Maybe two, three hundred million more than us. We're not far off. The way procreation goes on in our community, bro, we'll be soon largest. You know, community in the world will be the Muslim community. Mm. Islam will be the the largest religion in the world soon. But what we what we're pushing for is to basically. Not to uh, not to get anybody confused or anything like that. Not for some sort of a takeover, but just to be treated, you know, with the say. If you're gonna give a Jew respect, then give a Muslim respect. That's all we're asking for. Exactly. So, do we need to be united for that to happen? I think yeah, so. Yeah, I, I, I would think say so. so. For any we, so we have to first sort yeah. our own house out before we expect someone to respect us. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I think I think I I I disagree slightly. I think we individually have responsibility. We individually mm. carry ourselves right, then why why would somebody want to then do that? See, uh, I'm I'm uh, what I'm doing is my opinion genuinely. Now I think about what you've just said is there's a sense of kind of politics kicking into my mind as to how would we do it because yes, what you just said is absolutely bang on right. If each and every single Muslim, united or not, knows the fact that he's got a cause he on an individual basis needs to fight for and that's to be treated fairly within the world, right? So yeah. that he there's certain things people can't say about him as a Muslim and certain things that he can't say about other people. But where that kind of, where my opinion came from of, you know, uh, sorting oneself out before and uniting, it comes down to the political side of it. Because if we were to do some sort of a, be it a protest, be it a petition, be it a debate, be it awareness, people have to come together. And it's the coming together. It's the it's, yeah. it's the coming together that you know you know when it is throughout history within mm. Islam, either an event mm. or a personality has brought the ummah together. Mm. No, we're saying we need that. So so we've American Muslims have had Malcolm X. Yeah. He he bought he was a he was a voice. Mm. Where's the voice in our communities? Our voice politically are the Muslim MPs we put there. Yeah, We've not held them yeah. to account, right? Mm. So it, it goes back down to that. Now, if we don't understand the law that we live in, mm. that hate, hate speech is a crime. Mm. If you've had hate speech, don't you? Report it. Mm. Why are you brushing it under the carpet? That doesn't... Unity, it doesn't matter about unity there. We need to understand the, the laws and the rights that we have. I don't mm. think we know what our rights are. Exactly. I agree with you I'll on that. I think a lot of us are ignorant of devil's that. Adequate. How mm. do we know I, how many people have reported the uh, hate crimes to the police and the police haven't taken it further from Muslims? How do we know that? How do we know Muslims don't actually think yes, in a say, people do have, have a lack of faith. But, but, I'll tell you something. Mm. I was doing sales here yeah, two years ago in Halifax, W.A. Smith. I was stood there. An old woman, I was trying to sell to her, pitch to her. Mm. She opened the newspaper. She goes, that's one of you in it. Terrorist. To my face. Mm. 
Arangma manager says it's just been called a terrorist in WH Smith. What's going on? Mm. He goes report it. So I reported it. To nothing who? happened to the police, to the Halifax police. Nothing happened, nothing up there taken forward. I remember me and my manager were on the case for two weeks. We were ringing him up. Nothing up moved forward. True story. But you took a step in the right direction. The problem is that sometimes... Then it disheartens guys, you though that the system is disheartens you. That, I understand that. But what you got to remember that we're at a stage where we are fighting for something. We are fighting to be recognised. We yes. are fighting for that law. You got to understand that along the way, we have to do our part. We're not Because we, we're not there. If we were there, we wouldn't... Do we need to fight? We, yeah, in we the world we to... live in, the world that's so advanced and so so great now, mm. do we really need to fight to raise our voice to be recognized? Yet we're the largest population. Mm. As the gays met- got recognized. We're still not recognized properly. No, the homosexual I... community has more recognition. I'm, I'm not saying completely Islam is not recognized. Mm. Mashallah, we've got Masood Ozil. We've yeah. got Khabib. These are world figures, powerful Salah. figures. Muhammad Salah. Salah. Paul Pogba. <laughs> you know, these are Muslim figures mm. that are... Influential Masu as well. Ozil, every Friday, puts a post up on his Instagram. Mm. Masu Ozil, every Friday, he is pu- pushing Islam now. This is what he's doing. He's, he's bringing more Islam on content onto his timeline than he was before. Why? Because he spoke up. He spoke it's, up for the... For the per- cause, isn't it? Persecution of um, the Muslims in China... Mm. And look at his career is going down. Arsenal not giving him a chance. Why? Politically. But he's risked that. Khabib, when the French president mm. said what he said about the Prophet وسلم, and then the Muslim communities and, and how it was so anti-Islam. Mm. Look at the post he put up. Muhammad Ali is the greatest example of the world loving a Muslim. Ali, mm. Donald you know, Trump said R.I.P. Mm. You know, he was, he was a Muslim Allah have mercy on his soul. Amen. He was a, a, a sporting figure, the greatest in the 20th century. There was no one equal to him. Greatest speaker of the 20th century. Awesome speaker. Mm. My point is, these voices were risen. They awoken hearts of people. We, as, an, as individually, we need to actively become activists in becoming recognized. If the sy- systematic or systemic racism that mm. goes on or discrimination that's going on or hate speech against Muslims that's going on, then we need to make a change of that. I believe that if we was to say, Afan Sahib said we need to unite first before we can change the world. Mm. When will that unity come? Might be another 10, 15, 20 years. Mm. It might be too late then. See, but I'm a why, don't we, why don't we now individually understand where we're going? You know, we, we all, I mean, we, we as a, I'm not going to, I don't want to digress too much from this, but we always say, well, why, why is the, why are Muslims, not just in, in, within religious circles, why are we not united? Mm. That unity is not going to happen. There's difference of opinion. Mm. It's tolerance between us that we need to promote, that we're able to tolerate one another. Mm. It's, it's having dialogue without offending. But it's, uh, at the but same time, unity in it, I mean, no, but look, unity e- e- in even if, look, let's, for example, for example, so if we can, don't end, have the basic human tolerance level inside us, what do we expect? I then? get that, but look, on an, even if it's forget unity for a second, let's talk individual basis. We're working towards a cause. We all want the same thing, whether somebody else wants it and we agree with him or not, based on the way he wants to go about it. We all want the same thing, and that is to when it comes to freedom of speech. My personal opinion is that the only community who has got the you know, the, the, the negative side of freedom of speech is the Muslim community, my personal opinion. I think there's a... There's, is there a rise in anti-Islam? Of course there is. Every year, you know, whether it's not... Yeah, the black community will uh, dispute what you said, by the way. No, look, in their own way, I agree with them as well. They yes. get shot and killed in America, look, man. We, we, we mentioned this last time about white privilege. You know, at the end of the day, each community to themselves feel like they're living under that shadow. Me as a Muslim, I feel like it's us guys who are living under that shadow. But what I'm saying is, on an individual basis, you mentioned Malcolm X, you mentioned Ali, you know, you mentioned um, uh, and Khabib and all these people that are doing their bit and tying it in with what Didi said about reporting something to the police. Look, these people have worked towards a cause. Yeah, the cause being to not have to live under that shadow and to live on that same to be recognized, yeah, to be recognized, have the same rights, have that same rights. But the fact is. With their efforts, with their efforts and all the people who have come and gone, and with our efforts on an individual or a united basis today, we've not reached that cause. So when we're taking those hits and the police are not taking notice and the world is still giving us flack for it, 
we still have to take into consideration that we've not if we'd reached that cause we wouldn't have to report because we wouldn't get it in the first place we have to learn where we are before we, before we learn where we want to go where that's the point where that you know we're at the point where we can't expect for me to call the police and say i've just been called a paki on st leonard's road can you please get here they they're not going to turn up why because it's not their job yet we need to work towards if i know that i need to report it for enough cases to build up for it to reach media attention for it to re- uh, reach political attention for it then to become a reason for them to do something but if we get disheartened every single time and if ali and kabib and these big big people who have got a much better platform than us to do it then we we say this we're going to be stuck for a very very long time if now is where we're getting stuck up i don't <laughs> that, that's my point subhanallah subhanallah <laughs> no you're right i think i think we need to wake up and realize mm. where we are before we know before, before we, we can put a plan where we know we need to go yeah what would, the next step on the stage would is. you say we need more people in uh, this is for you i mean entertainment in media uh, i think in politics we need a huge representation of the muslim community more we need to get we need young academic mm. uh, articulate intellectual aspiring leaders mm. from our communities to select them to go and represent us mm. and be a voice for us in parliament we need i mean i don't even want to go into the, the topic of you know uh, pakistani asian footballers Mm. We've not we've not even broken through yet. Mm. You know we've had Amir Khan who's broke through. Well, mm. He was a voice. Whatever anyone said, mm. he's, he was he's been fantastic. Course, he's been course. phenomenal. Two time world champion. in his right. You know two time world champion. World yeah. champion. Awesome. He, he he gave the British Muslims who he gave were British, losing yeah. hope. He gave them hope. Yeah yeah. You yeah, got yeah, kids. I, uh, I I'll mention it openly here. I've done a couple of events for them. Lights Out Boxing Academy. Yeah. Those kids that come in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it reminds me of something that Obama said once. Yeah. Sorry, just to give you an example of it. Obama once said that being a young black kid in America, somebody telling me that you could be president one day. He goes. It wasn't ever believable till he himself became president. Now you ask a black kid in America, and their eyes are light up. It's the exact same way that Amir Khan and these other. Hope. Yeah, it's given hope. You'll be recognized, of course, and that's what these young British Muslims that have broke that system and have made it out there. Even not enough of them, no. Amir no, Khan enough, broke course. the matrix. He's yep. the only one, unfortunately. At the no, moment. no, no. He's not. He's not. You had that uh, young Asian British he's girl well on, champion, on that cooking though. show. No, he's not. But what I'm saying oh, you is that Nadia Hussein won the Great British Bake Off. It yeah? brings me back to the point that. We're doing it at this level. We can say there's not enough, and there's only one. But we've not reached that cause yet. Yeah, but I mean, if we're talking about Asian mm. Asian community, yeah. then these are your breakouts. But if we're talking about the Muslim community, Mo which Farah? is not restri- Mo Farah, yeah, the France football team, French football team. Yeah. How many of them are Muslim? Haji the Kante, me. You can't touch my guy and go low. Yeah, that man. Defensive midfield. Don't talk to me about football. Do not talk to me about football. You know, we we talk about Muslims and all mm. Muslims. A lot of the people are big fans of Kante, man. Mm. Khabib, you know, well, well, Khabib. you know, you know when I just I still live at Marseille. You know when France won the World Cup, mm. bro, the whole of the stadium was singing a hey, Angolo Kante. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But it, it, it gives me goosebumps. You know why? Because that's a Muslim. You know, Angolo Kante is a simple guy, bro. Mm. He's one of the, the best box to box midfielders in the world, man. I rate him. I, I, I'm I sure know if him. I knew about football, it'd give me goosebumps. Short as well, guy, but I just don't he's know dark enough. skinned mm. from African roots. France World Cup winner. Mm. He's won the Premier League with Leicester. He's won the Premier League with Chelsea. Chelsea. The man, and he's a Muslim. He could mm. be seventy five percent. Why? Why are we? Does not, it give you pride? I I, I feel very proud mm. knowing that Haji Kante is. Is the man? So this is the things that we need to Paul work Abib on, man. Paul Pogba, be... you know, Mesut Ozil. Mm. We should. These are Muslim figures that we should be. For the Asian, be for the Asian community, raving over, man. Yeah, of course, I agree. I uh, agree with representation <laughs> in 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 media, in entertainment as well, because that's where influence happens from. Who do we, who do we get influenced by? Who do kids get influenced by? Athletes, you know, I, I'll be honest you know. with you. This last 10, 15 years, I would say, looking at the the BBC in particular. That that I've I've seen that coming in. You know, you've got people who are and they're, they're inspirations for me because I like to be a funny guy. You know, uh, uh, Guz Khan Guz is it? Khan, yeah. Guz, Guz Khan, yeah. Guz Khan, Guz Tez Ilyas, funny guy. You know, these people and they've they've done it. I, I would consider that like Amir Khan in boxing. You know, you reach that level, that's a breakthrough. But making it onto the BBC and having your own show, that's smashing oh, yeah, it as no, well. No, 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 he's, he's a Muslim. No, he's a Muslim. And, and 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 how many times does he also voices his opinion as yeah, a Muslim? Yeah, yeah, no, no, he's so smashed many it. times. He's, he's smashed it, yes. And and what it is is you know we when we look at that. These are success stories. Yeah, 
as, as, as much as we've spoke about how it's not happening for us, there's these people that are yeah, making man. things happen for us. Yeah. That are voices of, you know, Riz Ahmed was in, Hollywood, in Venom. Man. Hollywood, mm. you know, he's acting next to Tom Hardy. You know, the, the Muslims breaking through. Yeah. And they are becoming huge, powerful voices. Mm. And we're seeing that. And we need to get behind that and support that. But what can we do on an individual aspect? We need to understand what our rights are, what mm. laws we can... And, and whenever we have cases of hate crime, discrimination, report it, make it aware, make mm. it known, let people know what's happening. Mm. Don't let them, don't let the system uh, uh, drown you out from voicing and, your opinion. And be the opposite of the, what the system thinks you are. I think there's some, uh, obviously, like I said, uh, is, Islamically, there's a saying or there's a hadith that says, carry yourself the way that, you know, uh, of the religion that you're from basically you know carry yourself as a muslim as you want to be treated as a muslim show the world that you're that peace loving you know you're the type of person that anybody yeah, can approach you have to be that person now look i, I went to liverpool when they won um, the premier league now you got liverpoolians who i don't know if you remember i'm about about 10 15 years ago liverpool was a very very uh um, the point you can make not rightly so but a very racist area you know uh, if, if you're Muslim you go there you might we were told as kids always in practice yeah don't go to Liverpool yeah, yeah, unless you need yeah. to pick up your passport yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the only that's time all, yeah, you yeah. used to go to Liverpool as oh, Muslim I forgot to mention <laughs> Moin Ali and Adil Rashid oh, yeah, as well Adil, yeah, yeah, local yeah. Adil of Rashid the local massive, Bradford lad massive made it massive yeah. you know one day we'll get him on this podcast inshallah, inshallah. maybe we might get Masu Ozil on the podcast we, you know we can talk to him and, and say, share your views and yeah. sentiments any of these guys but the point is these are success stories that we should, we should be very proud of. Of course. You know, everyone in their personal life makes mistakes. Yeah. We can all point fingers at Amir Khan and these and Amo Farah and all these dot. Bro, no but perfect. ultimately, they are Muslims. They read the Kalima La ilaha yeah. illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And they are in positions of power. They are in positions of, of influence. influence. Yep. They Hang can, on. they do huge work. Mm. You know, when, when Masu Ozil writes Juma Mubarak and that, that's powerful. When Khabib, you know, wins his fight and he says, Alhamdulillah, mm. Alhamdulillah, you know, all praises to Allah. And then, you know, he thanks his parents. A lot of people didn't know what respect to parents was till Khabib yeah, mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, 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 bang on. Respect to these guys, bang man. On, these course. guys are our voices. These are our people. And we need people to grow in our communities mm. and say that. And everyone's saying, like, did he speak? I think Didi spoke more t today than he has. Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Do they still want me to speak? <laughs> well, they still saying it. How many people look at me? What speak? can I say, man? Well, let me see, let me see. Let, we should let him speak. Let, let Didi give I'm me five minutes. No, I've had my moments. No, no, Didi, it's all on you, mate. No, no, it's all right. We're going to sit back. Don't worry, mate. Carry on, carry on. No, no, did these were the ones like in and out, in and out. I'm smelling something here. Jealousy from, <laughs> from my two <laughs> co-hosts. We jealous, man. We wouldn't have <laughs> no, no, people, to be jealous. People want to know, man. People you know, um, but it, it's, it's, it does make a difference. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. These you know, people are people. making moves, you know, and Just Chunks. Like, yeah, yeah, Chunks, yeah, boy, yeah, Chunks. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know him, but man. Chunks is a Muslim, sick. Somalian, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I just want to say something about him, yeah, why he's like inspirational because a lot of the kids nowadays growing up want to do what he's doing and he's broken that barrier now. He's on Sky Sports, man, in the morning. He's on he Sky Sports, G. Yeah. Broadcasting, man, Soccer AM and all sorts. Smash this Sky Sports. The guy's just like you. What do you, what do you mean just like? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'm pretty sure that all the qualities <laughs> that we got <laughs> shared in common. But yeah, yeah look, I you know what it comes down to? He put in the effort and he remembered his cause. You know, if we all remember our own cause, yeah, we're talk, bringing it back to freedom of speech. If that's our cause as a Muslim community, as whoever it is, if we remember that, then whatever we do in our daily lives, if he's wanting to reach that platform and then give this message out that I am a Muslim. Which platform does he want to reach? No, whatever platform he's at now. Platform, not platform. Platform, platform, whatever it is. My point being that, look, he's reached that point. There's a lot of people who've stayed quiet about who they are, have not brought their religion into it. They've made it and then they've smashed it. Why? To have that effect. And at the end of the day, look, it's about knowing that there's a cause there and everything we do towards it, you know, is working towards reaching that cause. But if it was down to uh, the big celebrities... I'm fine with the mic. What's oh. that? He's, he's not the mic the and the guy's fine with it. I won't find it. I'll be messing with my gun. Can't you? <laughs> I've lost my train of thought there. But the point being is we need to remember These guys the have made it and they've broken the barriers. They've broken through the system and, and there they are voices that mm. are Muslim voices that are out there. Mm. Irrespective of their ethnicity, you know ethnicity and their mm. their background these yeah. guys are muslims they're out there it's happening 
But that does not stop that the fact that there's a lot of anti-Islam out there. There's a lot of rhetoric against Muslims. There's a lot of rhetoric against, um, you know, there's a lot of Islamophobia. There's, there's, and I said, dare I say it again, the media plays a huge role mm. in how the minds of people think, mm. how people think in their minds. You know, when the media puts out a car has gone straight into a group of people, immediately is a Muslim terrorist. Yep. You know, the word Allahu Akbar is used again. Connotation, mm. stereotype, jihad, stereotype. Why did they There's raise a lot the terror there, man? Like even things like that. I'll just throw it to you, I'm a, How do you explain them raising the terror levels without any reason? Like it happened in France. Why did they raise the terror level to the uh, highest level here in the UK? Well, what happened in France was phobia? Charlie Hebdo, for example. You know, most likely they're gonna probably take this podcast off anyway because we're mentioning all the things that mm. probably they don't want. It's an infringement of freedom of speech. <laughs> freedom of discussion here we penalty. have the right to say what we want to say but we're still going we're not here to offend we're nobody going. we're just talking about what's real what's yeah. happening yeah. you know how we as a Muslim community are uh, uh, subconsciously there's in, in the background things are happening against them mm. I'm, not, I'm not a conspiracist when I say this that you know when you've got the, the president of a country openly saying that Muslim immigrants you know, if they say something against these cartoons which are drawn, they, they want to have the right to draw cartoons depicting the Prophet ﷺ, who is the leader of 1.8 million Muslims mm. around the world. They want to have this right. That is downright offensive, bro. Of course. We will not accept that. That, I, I, that is truly offending to me. Why? Why is it offensive to us? Mm. If someone draws a cartoon of the Prophet ﷺ, End of the day, it's a cartoon. The argument would be, it's a cartoon. It's nothing. Are you... The reality is, like Sayyidina Sheikh Muhammad al Yaqubi, he mentioned, mm. when they draw something like this, mm. they're actually showing the ugliness inside them. Yeah. It's a reflection of the ugliness that they have. True. Mm. It's not a reflection of the, the greatness of the Prophet they, No. They, yeah, they'd never be able to put that. They on. will never. Why? Because... You see, they're going to try. They're going to try taking the love of the Prophet ﷺ out of our hearts. They can't do it. Mm. If it came to it, down to it, we would sacrifice our life for Rasulullah ﷺ. Oh, when I say sacrifice, I mean we would give up what we need to give up. Mm. We would give up what we have to give up in order to defend his honor, in order to, to protect. But here in the democratic society, in a society in the West, in Europe, in, in, in the Middle East, uh, not in the Middle East, sorry, here in Europe and mm. in, in the West, in the, U, in the UK, where we're living, mm. we need to exercise our human right here. You can say what you want, but don't offend. Mm. Don't, don't spread hate. You know who's inciting terrorism? Who's inciting extremism? It's statements like these. Mm. This is what's inciting problem. Because you're, you're, you're tapping with the emotions of 1.8 million Muslims. 1.8 billion Muslims. Yep. It's like, you, you sometimes, I, I wonder, is it planned? Are they really wanting to stoke the fire inside it's provocation, us? that's what it is. They're just provoking. It's provoking. Yeah. You're right. That's a good word. It's provoking us. Mm. It's provoking a reaction out of us. And you know how we should react to this? The way the Prophet ﷺ reacted. We don't react, uh, you know, fire with fire. Mm. We react with character mm. you can't you know you try you can't you can't you can't uh offenders how you know the way you whatever you say about the prophet والسلام, our belief of him is so great that you can't even come equal to that of course you know not giving them that uh Amir. don't don't give them that importance mm. they want that importance don't give them that importance you're right so this is something that's very important mm. this is something that we need to learn we need to go away. We need to learn our rights. What is Islamophobia? The rise of Islamophobia. The rise of anti-Islam. Hate crimes against Islam. Hate speech against Islam. All of these things. Become activists. Bring a change in yourself, in your communities. Choose, um, choose wisely who you want to represent. Who you want to represent you, and be your voice mm. in political, in the political sphere, in the ent entertainment industry, in the sporting industry. Mm in all of these aspects is very important and we should celebrate the achievements of our muslim figures our yep. in the past of course the present these are people who have done immense work for us 
And on that note, I'm going to say to you guys, any final words you want to share? Because we don't want to really drag this podcast on too no, long. No, too long. Um, so, yeah, any, fi- any final words, Vas? Finally, look, I just want to say to everyone and, you know, a reminder to myself as well that, you know, freedom of speech has its own importance for each different person and for each different community. You know, some people, it's in their favor. Some people, it's not in their favor. You know, I can speak from my perspective that it's not always in our favor. But what you've got to remember is your own character. You know, um, if you go to America and you speak to a black person there, they'll tell you that no matter, it doesn't matter if slavery ended in the 40s and the 50s. They're still facing it, facing it through the systems today. But the point comes down to this, that look, you are responsible for yourself and you're a representative of the culture or the religion that you belong to. So, you know, just always keep that in mind. Always keep calm, cool and collected and uh, just do dua and, you know, uh, work towards that cause in a peaceful and positive manner. Yeah, Didi, like, any last last words? Yeah, I just like to say uh, everyone wants you to speak, so let's give you the mic. Is Hassan, uh, uh, Hassan, I think is my cousin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I honestly yeah, think it's him. Uh, I think he's there and he's just going. spamming. Didi for president. Let Didi talk. Exactly. Free my people. <laughs> you know, it's, it has to be his cousin in it. It wasn't an outsider. I planted him in there. It has to be his cousin in it. I did it. I was just gonna say, I hope his best friend's brother. That's one. I hope everyone enjoyed the conversation. Took something away from it. Very productive and oh yeah, like, share, subscribe, and let them know. If they want to watch this back where they can watch it. Yeah, well. Alika Media. Guys, if you guys, uh, obviously it's on Alika Media right now. Uh, if it does get taken down, then it will be available on Let's Talk with Aima podcast. Uh, this channel, so uh, it's a YouTube channel. Please, uh, the our media team will put the link in now. Subscribe to that channel. Share it, please. If you enjoy these podcasts, uh, you know, please continue to watch them. Uh, we are discussing whether to, con- uh, to increase... Mm. The volume of podcasts that we do uh, week. weekly from one to two now. Um, and inshallah, we're going to have some interesting topics. Uh, we might be even starting a discussion on football, uh, on sports, on all sorts of topics. And there's a lot of taboo subjects like drugs, alcohol, gambling, uh, drug dealing, forced marriages, uh, forced marriages marriage, uh, finding a spouse. All of these sort of topics are podcasts and discussions that we're going to have uh, on this podcast. Uh, on this platform, let's talk with Aima. So please subscribe, please support the work, support the movement, help us grow. And like I said, there's only one Joe Rogan uh, who's on this level, but we are out to get him. Um, <laughs> all the probably. way to the top. But all the way to the top, we're going to carry on. And remember everything Zach we talked Lachid. about, support the cause. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, end of the day, it's uh, freedom of speech. We have the right to say what we want. But uh, if you have any better word than the word freedom, uh,